told this to one of my friends. I said, you're not hurting enough to get out of your struggle. Because when something hurts you enough, mm, mm, mm. when it hurts and you can't take it no more, you like, yo, I got to get from out of here. Facts. But when you comfortable and everybody around you is comfortable and y'all all doing the exact same thing, it don't hurt. Mm. But it hurt me to remain where I was. Like, it hurted me to look around and see all these homeless people, you know, um, with all these, cl you know, these clothes for days at a time. And, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, it hurted me. Mm. Looking at my son, like, that hurted me to be that woman who had her baby sleeping under a bridge. That hurted me. Mm. So how could I remain there with him knowing that it hurts that bad? Mm. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yo, what's poppin'? Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Man, I'm here. This is a special uh, bonus edition episode. Listen, man, I've been getting a lot of money on the show lately, bro. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta hit, hit the, hit the uh, comments below and say thank you, bro. Y'all gotta say thank you because we, we've been getting to it, man. We've been getting to it. You feel me? So uh, this, this, this next guest I got, I mean. She not a stranger to the struggle, right? That's what make her story so beautiful. That's what make it so hard, because she like us, you feel me? She like one of us from New Orleans. You get what I'm saying? She from the slums. She was homeless at one point. She had a kid at a very young age, I think like yeah. 17. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So like, listen, this is how people's right here. I got uh, Miss Terrica Lynn Smith in the building. I said it right? You said it right. Good yeah, job. yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, man, when I say, I, um. It was a short notice, you feel me? But, <laughs> but we here, we here one we in here. and two. I was I was watching a few of your videos before. Yeah. Like so before I so it was manifestation. We've been talking about that all, all day. You feel me? Yeah. So like um I want to get I want to start from the beginning. Right. Like yeah. New Orleans. Right. Talk to me. Like how was you a kid? How was how was growing? I want to paint a picture for people before we get yeah. to the money. <laughs> before we get there. So um I mean. Just real high level, like I was a problem child. Like I started mm. off, I had a um, very rough childhood, um, abused. Um, mm. Mother sold me um, to a drug dealer at five years old. Wow. Um, you know, and then obviously I became a very rebellious child um, and I ended up in foster care um, right after my grandmother died. And so during my time in foster care, you know, I would fight, I would run away. Um, I don't know, I was a menace, right? And then eventually they tried to lock me away, put me in a mental hospital, say I was crazy. And, you know, um, truth of the matter is I just was broken. Like I was hurt. I've been through hell, you know, um, by this point in my life. And so I kept running away, running away, running away. Well, by the time I turned 16, they had legally emancipated me from the state. So I was an adult at 16 years old. Wow. Like, they was like, yo, you grown. Like, you know, I stayed on runaway. And I um, ended up getting pregnant with my son. Um, got pregnant at 16, had him at 17. We was homeless, um, living under a bridge in New Orleans. And I just didn't want to be poor no more. I mean, I wanted to be a better mother to him. I had a horrible mother. I had a horrible upbringing. You know, I would get beat all the time. And so, you know, when I had my son, it was like for me to say, you know, I don't want to be here no more. Like, mm -hmm. I want him to have a mother because I didn't have that. You know, um, and so that was really the defining moment in my life where I went from being a victim because I had a I had a right to be a victim up until that point. I was a child, you mm -hmm. know, um, and then I decided that I'm going to be a victor. Like I'm going to fight for him. Like I'm going to be this woman, you know, um, that I felt like I should have had, mm. you know. So I want to paint a picture. So follow me. I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. We're going to be back and forth for a second. So what's the you do real estate, right? Yes. How much money? What's the most money you've seen personally? In real estate? Yeah, like just in your pockets and your bank account. What's the most money you've seen, you think? I mean. You never had nobody ask you that question straightforward like that? Well, no. Um, 
I mean, I'll just say my trust is nine figures. Damn, I don't yeah. even know what that, like what that even looks like. <laughs> yeah. Nine figures. All right, so no, I, so I say that because I want to talk about the story, mm-hmm. but for people that might not, you know, ignorance mm-hmm. is bliss, and people just people have short attention span, right? Right. So before right. we get into the story, I want people to see that. Oh, nah, you serious? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. this is this is not. Yeah. No. Homeless was my mentor, mm. so I ain't have like a man in my corner or a woman. Like homelessness, I was like, yo, I don't like this. Like, I don't like being on the street. You know, I don't like smelling funky. I don't like being able to not feed my kid. Like, that was the biggest mentor for me. So, you know, where I'm at today, you know, it took a it took 18 years to get here, but it was 18 consistent years of hard work, like mm. keeping your head down and just pushing and, and going through the, you know, the fight and just getting there. And by the time you look up, you got people in your corner that's like, yo, we need you to be able to share what you've done you know, to the world. So it's not like, you know, oh, we just started this real estate thing. You know, I just started moving courts. It's not. I've been doing this 18 years. Yeah, I seen a meme. Well, I think I seen a girl talking about this on Twitter, and, and they were saying, like, yo, you don't have to struggle. You don't have to uh, go through hard times to live good, and um, that's something that they teach us, and that's not mm-hmm. true. You don't have to do that. What you think about that? My children don't know what struggle is. Mm. Like, you get what I'm saying? So um, I think, you know, it's like you're a product of your environment. And so, like, the environment I grew up in, there was no home ownership. Nobody was owning homes. Nobody was talking about making millions of dollars in a day, in an hour, in a minute, in a second. Like, people not having those type of conversations. You know, um, the, the conversations that I grew up on was, like, who about to go to the corner store? Mm. Like, that's the kind of conversations I grew up on. Or go get some, you know, let's borrow $5 or whatever the case may be. So, you know, for my children... I made sure that I implemented in them the type of mindset that they need to know that nothing is impossible. Mm. You do whatever you want in life. It don't matter where you come from. It don't matter how you got started. None of that matters. Look at me. But my children, they they were born, like, I'm not going to say born because I had to work for my son to get up to this point, but they do have a gold spoon in their mouth. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So they don't have to get it out the mud like I had to get it out the mud. And I purposely did that, and I'm unapologetic about about my children not having to get nothing out the mud. Like struggle is not cute. Struggle will keep your bloodline in bondage for years and years and years. Mm. And so it takes one person such as yourself, Jay, that's up here doing something positive for other people in your family be like, yo, we want to rock like he rocking. Like right now, when I look at my family, like no shade to my family, I love them. They probably watching this right now, but I'm the richest in the room. Yeah. You get what I'm Talk saying? So heavy, yeah. And so I don't, I'm unapologetic about it because my children, now they have options. My son, 19, he like, yo, I don't know what I want to do in life. I'm just going to chill right now. That's his choice. I'm not even mad at him for that. They like, yo, he entitled. No, nah, he just got choices. Mm. We never had a life of choices, so we don't know what that feel like, so we call it entitlement. You see what I'm saying? But when your children have choices and options in life, it's like, yo, we didn't have that. So we like, oh, they spoil. They just no, they just have options. Mm. And it's different. Right. We so used to the struggle. But we we we, it's like we so used to the struggle that it become embedded in our minds so much so that we think that because that's our reality, that it's the reality. That's right. If That makes sense. And we got to stop glorifying the struggle. Mm. So let me ask you this. So being on that talking about sacrificing, like going through something. Right. You said your, your, your child has been fed with a gold spoon right Mm -hmm. yeah but we have to it has to be some correlation to hard work and sacrifice to success right or no so i find you know for me hard work didn't get me to be rich Mm. right me absolutely loving what i do kept me going my passion kept me going my like all of that kept me going hard work is just a part of the process Mm. you know um for something that you're trying to build but if my daughter say she want to go live in a third world country and go help kids in peru like she normally do what's wrong with that Mm. i like it i like it a lot of times i think we do equate hard work with success and Mm, I, I don't know. I think, honestly, it's just me matriculating them into my career. And the more I learn, I'm learning that it's not really about the hard work. It's about working smart. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Because you can work your ass into a ditch, into a hole, mm-hmm. and into the hospital on a right. hospital bed. Yep. You don't got to show for it. That's right. I so, know a lot of hard workers that we don't know. Mm, <laughs> that makes sense? Yeah. I know a lot of hard workers we don't know. Damn. Just remember that. Sheesh. 
So how do we work smart if we don't have the funds behind the backers? How do we work smart if we don't have the resources? The but money the is a poor man problem. Oof. Sheesh, talk to me. Right. So whenever you, whenever I'm around my wealthy friends, money is the last objective to any deal being funded. Because we know we can get the money. What we need is the mindset to know what is going to be the exit plan, how we're going to put this together, who's all going to be involved. So when I hear people say they need money, it automatically tells me where they're at mentally because I used to be there mentally. I used to know. I used to be that person who say, oh, I don't have this, so I can't do that. But what I realize now is what I know is what gets me in rooms. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So, like, for instance, you know, we're working on a multi-million dollar real estate project. I'm not asking where I'm going to get $40 million from. Do I need to get it out my trust? Do I need to, you know, get it from, you know, my partner? So, none. I know we can do $40 million. Mm. I'm not worried about that, right? I'm more concerned about the business structure and the opportunity that's going to come for, from it and how we're going to line it up. Mm. So, you don't need money to make money. You don't. Like, a lot of people be like, oh, you need money. No, you really don't. You really don't. Let me ask you a question. Talk to me. You have $10,000? I do. Okay, perfect. Um, and I told you, I said, hey, Jay, I got this opportunity down in Louisiana. I just need $10,000 to get in on it. It's a good real estate deal. We're going to make about $40,000. Would you come in with me on that? Yeah, I would. But I ain't put up no money. I said, do you got $10,000? Facts. You see what I'm saying? You can't be asking me this on camera either, man. Because I told you that, that our audience is way yeah. different. Like, you got to be careful. Yeah. We got to tread lightly. But yeah, I'm with you. But we want them to know that money should not be a problem. Because you, a lot of a lot of people sit at home in the same situation because they think they need money. That's but bad. money kept me in bondage, though, Jay, just to keep you, like, mm. just to be honest with you, right? Me believing that I needed a certain amount of money, um, I think help me back so much further because now like now that I'm on the other side of it I know money still can't get me in certain rooms relationships get you in certain rooms knowing the right people Mm. and by knowing the right people for instance like me and my brother pulled up here right here in the Lamborghini and you made a statement about the car right but in my mind I know that there's a membership club for Lamborghinis well if those if that club right all have Lamborghinis, they got to be, they got to have some type of income, right? Mm -hmm. But guess what happened? You just created access for yourself. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And so I just believe there's certain access that can be given that money just cannot buy. I'm sitting here because of access, Mm. right? Not for sure. And because I have knowledge, because they know I have knowledge, they like, yo, let's put that knowledge out there. My money didn't get me in this room. It could have, it probably could have never got me in this room. No, that's a fact. But I don't want people to be like how I was sitting at home trying to be stressed out about finances because you can't struggle and dream at the same time. You can't struggle and dream at the same time. You can't. Why can't you? You can't because when you're in the middle of a struggle, that's all your mind is focused on. All you think about is I got to do this. I got to do that. What's the next play? What's this? But when you dream it and you like, yo, we about to go and do this. That's a happy feeling. Struggling is not a happy feeling. It's a down feeling. Mm. So you're not going to be able to do both at the same time. You're going to have to pick a side. Mm. So what I want people to understand is that in order for you to be able to thrive and dream, you have to get out of the struggle. And the struggle is holding you bondage because you think you need a piece of paper to get you there. But if you have a gift or something very creative that can help other people, you have access to capital you don't even know about. All right. So first of all, this is going to be fire. Like this is this is going to be fire. This is already fire. It's crazy. (laughs) So. I feel like some could say, right, because I'm in the middle. Some could say that it's easy to say that on a to have, you have hindsight bias. It's mm-hmm. easy to say that now that you got millions and you making all this money, but you had to go through that struggle. You had to, it had to be something in your mm-hmm. heart to get you through that for you to then be able to understand. Oh, this was wrong or this went that way that didn't just come in the middle of you struggling like you didn't just wake up and be in in your struggle say man i can't struggle and dream at the same time no right so my son Mm. for me was my dream i wanted to be a better mother for him 
So everything I did from that moment forward, as long as I had air in my lungs, that boy wasn't going to experience poverty again. So for him not to experience poverty again, I had to do something different and get out that struggle. Mm. If I would have stayed a victim, I would have raised a victimized child. My son would have been a victim of whatever circumstances that I placed upon him. Mm, mm -mm. So I did have to, at that moment, say, I need to fight. I have to fight or I have to retreat. What mm. I'm going to do? What I'm going to do? We ain't backing down from I can't. Sure. You know what I'm saying? That's That boy is all I got. <laughs> you know mm, what I'm nah, saying? Facts. So I'm going to fight for him as hard as I can, as much as I can, with everything I have within me. I'm going to fight. Mm. He going to know what it's like not to have to struggle. And that's what kept me moving. I think it's um, E.T. said, what did he say? When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, right? I think Shout that probably was the moment that you wanted to succeed, at least for your son, right? Mm -hmm. More yes. than you wanted anything in life. That's absolutely right. And sometimes people just don't have that. Right. Right. So how do you find it if you don't have it? So it's a lot of people I know still that don't that don't really have that right now. Like that makes sense. Um, and so how do you find it? I think what happens is. I told this to one of my friends. I said, you're not hurting enough to get out of your struggle. Because when something hurts you enough, mm, mm, mm. when it hurts and you can't take it no more, you like, yo, I got to get from out of here. Facts. But when you're comfortable and everybody around you is comfortable and y'all all doing the exact same thing, it don't hurt. Mm. But it hurt me to remain where I was. Like, it hurted me to look around and see all these homeless people, you know, um, with all these, cl you know, these clothes for days at a time. And, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, it hurted me. Mm. Looking at my son, like, that hurted me to be that woman who had her baby sleeping under a bridge. That hurted me. Mm. So how could I remain there with him knowing that it hurts that bad? Mm. Some people just not hurting enough. Mm. <laughs> this is going to be ignorant, but this I, I just got to say this because it's funny. You know what I love about just like way beyond this this conversation, but about people like you, myself, it, it seems so reasonable, right? And something so small as when you say it hurted me, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. it's, I think it's supposed to be it hurt me, right? Like, yeah. it's, mm -hmm. But the fact that you say that shows that like, bro, we ain't. We ain't no more better than nobody else. I and I probably use, said that no, no more better. I'm look, talking, no, let me tell I'm you crazy. something. Y'all get my point. Yeah, I still use my ABCs, okay? Like, I ain't that deep. I tell people all the time, stop using big words around me. Keep it simple. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't got time. I've been in a business meeting, you know. Um, somebody was telling me something about arbitrage. I'm like, what the hell is that? Tell me. Just speak normal to me, mm. right? You know what I'm saying? Oh, you mean um, like a renter owner or something? Yeah, oh, okay. Well, just say that. Like, just keep it simple for me. Like, we don't have to be that deep. And I think a lot of the times... We get inside of our heads thinking, you know, we got to be these people that we not. I show up as me. I'm in a hoodie. I'm in some leggings. I'm just going to be Tarek Lynn Smith, mm -hmm. you know, and I find I'm comfortable in that. And I think as long as we remain true to who we are, Jay, we're not going to get caught up in, you know what I'm saying, the hoorah. There can be a lot of things going on, but if you're not comfortable with yourself, you're going to move. But when you're comfortable, you demand I feel that, good you, here. yeah. You get what I'm I saying? Can't. Like, can nobody change you or shake you or move you? Mm. And that's how it is for me, you know. So I, I don't know. I just, I mean, I, I wish people. Uh, it's like we need to see this, but mm -hmm. somewhere in my heart, I'm gonna just keep it a hundred. I just feel like because it ain't because this isn't what's popular. This interview gonna just fall to like not. I don't want to say fall to wasted ground, but it's like. These are the conversations that need to go viral, but they yeah. don't. Right. Why not? Like, these right. are the, this is what we need. This is what needs to be plaguing the internet and, and, and social media and black Twitter and things like that. But why don't these conversations go viral so much? I'm just curious. Do you know? Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen. As an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, 
This is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I see you there. No, I don't. I'm not like a social media guru or anything like that. But what I can say is my job is simply if it changes one person, then I've done my job. Mm, mm, mm. She, okay. All right. I, we, man, we, we fast forward so much. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's reel in it. All right. So the, one of the first things you said that was interesting to me was I think, I think you said I'm a, I was a problem child or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But isn't that crazy? Because that's something that I feel like they give us that's a title mm-hmm. that they give us like mm-hmm. we don't walk around something a prop like mm-hmm. we have to learn that almost i want it to be a problem mm. i wanted to piss people off i wanted people to feel my pain like i was raped at five years old i wanted everybody to hurt i wanted everybody to feel everything i went through so i purposely tormented people in their lives i gave people hell as a child because i went through hell and so for me because i didn't know what love was i didn't know how to experience that i gave exactly what was given to me i would set your closet on fire you know what i'm saying you wake up you got a knife to your throat you know um foster parents would i mean i went through foster home after foster home after foster home nobody wanted me you know what I'm saying? And I knew if I was to just do one thing, they would throw me away. So I went on ahead and did the job for them, mm. put a knife to their neck so they can get me away. Damn. So in, in the midst of all of that, how, that's a lot. Like, that's a lot of process. How are How can you even accept love? It was hard. Like, it was so hard. I just was telling somebody, like, you know, um, My husband is such an amazing man. I'm so grateful for him. Um, He came in my life at 19 years old. By the time I had my second daughter, he came into my life. And I did not know how to love him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But he loved me beyond the scars. He loved me through all the hurt, all the nights that I would stay up and cry, all the nights I would reach for the doorknob because when I got raped as a little girl on the bathroom floor, I was reaching for the doorknob. And so I had trauma, so I would sleep like that. I didn't know how to love a man. I didn't know how to trust a man, you know, um, and he just loved me through all of that. He loved me before we had, you know, $1,000 in the bank. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And so um, – it took for him to consistently do it because I did things to him to say, oh, he's going to leave me too. That's that abandonment issue, you know, foster children deal with. And so I did everything I possibly could, you know, for him to have a reason to say, you know what, you know, F this female, she crazy. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? But he didn't do that. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I think it's, I ain't going to say it's a New Orleans thing, but I, I, I believe God gave me a New Orleans man for a reason. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He pretty strong. That's, bro, this is insane. Do you know how, like, powerful your story is? Do do you understand it? It's my testimony. I just, you know, it took me years, Jay, to get through it. I couldn't, um, in 2018, I couldn't talk about my life to nobody. Mm. Right? E helped me get through that. Mm. E.T. Shout out to E. I love you, E. Wait, uh, what, you like watching him or like this is like a personal relationship? It, no, it's a personal relationship. You see how it's crazy this is? Like I'm talking about ET, yeah. like some shit I saw on Instagram, yeah. and she like he helped me get through it. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, shout out to him. You know, shout out to the ETA family. Um, Text him and say I want to do an interview, but that's just sidebar, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but you know, ahead. yeah, like it's just you know, I, it took me a minute to get through that story. Mm. Like it took me a minute to love like who I really was, because you know what happened, Jay? I. Although, like, I was married and I, you know, I was having more children, I still had all of that pain. Mm. Like, I didn't get through my story. And in 2018, I was I was taking so many pills because I, I was at the peak of my career, making so much money, hand over fist, but I'm still unhappy. Mm. I got a man that loves me unconditionally. My children thinks I'm just the queen of the universe and I'm miserable. I'm Mm. miserable on the inside. I'm screaming and can't nobody hear me screaming, you know? Um, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. I go to church on Sundays. I serve, you know, um, I, I, I be a good wife. I don't cheat on my husband. You know, I'm there for my children. I'm, I'm top real estate bro. Like I'm doing everything right, but I'm suffocating. And, um, in 2018 is when I wrote my book and I released it. And that was the first time in my life I took a sabbatical mm. 
because you remember I said when it hurts you enough, you're going to do something. For sure. Right? And it was hurting me. It was hurting me to the point where I became suicidal to say, I don't even want to be here no more. Mm. I don't care how much money we have in the bank. If I was to die today, my family would be good. It got to the point where I needed to find Tarika. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, going through that mental battle and trying to find who I was, because I couldn't identify who I was. But that's because my identity was stolen from me. They took it from me at five years old. So I had to fight to find me back. I had to fight to get up. I had to fight. Even with wealth, I still had to fight because it hurt it. Mm. And, you know, um, I remember my daughter looking at me and she said, you didn't teach us how to give up. Like, you didn't teach us how to give up. And that was the moment I I booked a trip to New York. Um, Eden was in New York. I didn't even know him at the time. I went to a conference called Ignite. Inky was speaking, EC, all of them. And that was like, at that moment, they got me on camera. I'm on the front row, VIP, best seat in the house. I'm crying, snot, boogers, and tears. Because he said, there's some of you in this room that's so successful. This is what he said. There's some of you in the room right now that's so successful, but you can't even enjoy the fruits of what God has given you because you haven't dealt with what you've been through as a child. And I knew that was for me. Who else was he talking to? Mm. Right? So um, later um, I went through the program or whatever and, um, you know, Shout out to Valari. She's in on um, the program as well. You know, she was like, why are you so angry? And I'm like, I'm not angry. When I negotiated real estate, I'm like, I'm not angry. I'm smiling. Like, you know, that's how I'm we like, all yeah. be. I'm not angry. Yeah. I'm smiling. Yeah. Like. I'm smiling right now. You know, um, and she said, no, look at you. Mm. Like, look at you. And on a call, on a um, game changer call, I remember breaking down in front of a group of strangers on Zoom, sharing my story for the like first time with people. And then that's whenever I started the healing process. I got help, um, you know, um, and I just started healing. Yo, it's these are the conversations that I live for. Yeah, I'm not even gonna lie. This is fire. Like this is <laughs> this is way better than any amount of money like this right here because it shows people that damn i'm going through the same thing or i was at that same yeah. space i can get it too yeah what's the point of getting the money if you can't help somebody else get it right, right. even if you don't give somebody anything in the world just your story and you sharing that bro like mm -hmm. that is so important that's the purpose of like this platform yes and like the fact that you have a real story to come to the tears like yeah. damn that's <laughs> so let me ask you this i want to oh, i need some game mm -hmm. do you mentor people at all yeah so um actually we um do what's called a property challenge you got to spend five days with me mm -hmm. and in those five days you have to work mm -hmm. like it ain't no shortcuts what's funny is um a lot of people do challenges and different things like that but I actually bet everybody that's going to come sit at the table with me because I know when you come sit at the table with me, we're going to break bread together. But if you can't even commit for five days to yourself, you, you can't be around me. OK, I think you answered my question. So I was going to ask, like you said, you already vet them. Like, I feel like sometimes I find mentoring people hard because if they don't have the same drive as I have, mm -hmm. especially with me coming through so much. So mm -hmm. for me, it's no excuses because. That's right. Bro, I was at the bottom. Like, I lived it. Like, mm -hmm. it ain't no fairy tale people to be making stuff up. Like, mm -hmm. this is real. Right. Right? So, it's like, when you're making all these excuses, I, like, for me, it's hard for me to teach somebody when they come with so many excuses. I'm so dismissive. It's like, okay, if that's what you want to do, you back yeah. to the wolves. Right? That's right. Mm -hmm. So, I guess you don't deal with that because you vet them. Yeah, and I don't tell front. you twice. I only mm. give advice twice. Okay. That's it. That's my rule. Even with my children. I just told my son, I gave it to you twice. You don't mm. get it no more mm. because your mind is already made up for what you're going to do. You see, when you tell me something, if you tell me how to go catch a fish, I'm going to go, I'm going to go catch that fish. Right. But if you if like if I tell you how to go catch a fish, but you tell me, but why would I use this hook or why would I use this or why would I do that or why would I do this? <laughs> and you never go and try to catch a fish. I'm going to go tell you, look, I need you to go catch a fish with this pole then. Then you come back and you still have more. And I'm like, all right, I'm done. Mm. You do, you, you're not hungry. Because I'm telling you now, if you was hungry, you would have went and took a stick, shoved it in the water, got a fish, and came back and said, okay, what's next? Mm. That's the kind of people I like. Right. You know. Okay. Yeah, I, I just, I, I, 
it's like I said, it's just hard for me. And this is just I'm just learning because like it's hard for me to deal with certain people and be people be like you gotta be patient, you gotta you gotta do this, you gotta. And I think I I think I had a I heard a conversation with actually Shane's mm -hmm. was saying like when you bring successful people into something that's broken, mm -hmm. then it doesn't really set them up to to succeed. Yeah. So I guess that's so a good. part of that mm -hmm. is the system got to be in place to work though, I guess. That's right. Yeah, you got to have a system that works, but you also got to have people that work. You know, Nehemiah put a post, he said, I'm not working with nobody average this year. Mm. Like they got to be, they, they, they have to work how I work. And you know what's dope about that though? Mm -hmm. Like you said, mm -hmm. right? It's, that don't got nothing to do with money. No. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. as, so like the first thing you said, I'm, I'm my first th thought that came in my mind, like, oh yeah. I'm one of them. Like, yeah. That don't got nothing mm -hmm. to do with money. No, nothing at all. Damn. That okay. Okay. We got the story. Um. <laughs> oh man. At what point? Are you had your child at seventeen? Mm -hmm. You got pregnant at sixteen. Um. How were you able to get your first dollar? Because again, mm -hmm. I know at that moment you don't. You're not even. You haven't arrived where you are right right now. You remember so. you said creative. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. So I remember not. Um. I had enough tokens for a payphone. Okay. Y'all remember that? Y'all young. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she sound like me. Come on, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I remember having a thrifty paper and I was calling phone numbers in the newspaper. Jay, I didn't have no money. Just to be honest. Mm -hmm. I had none. So when I call, I would say, you know, hey, I'm Tarika. Um, is this apartment still available for rent? Yes, it is. It's four hundred dollars a month. Okay, I don't have four hundred dollars, but I do get my food stamps on this day. I'll give you my whole card if you just give me a place to stay. It hurt it. Mm. It hurt it bad enough. So I was willing to do whatever I needed to. I knew I can find food, right? Mm. I knew I can find food. There was one man that said, "We're not going to take your food stamps. We're going to give you a place to stay." Mm. But because it hurt it and because I made the phone calls and be, I didn't have no money. That's why I can tell people, they be like, oh, you got money. You don't know what it's like. Nah, I know what it's like not to have. Mm. I know what it's like not to have. I know what it's like to operate without anything. I know what it's like to keep going with a negative bank account. I know what it's like to keep going when everybody around you got all this fancy lifestyle and you sitting up here, you trying to make, t <laughs> you trying to make ends meet. And. You get what I'm saying? It's like, something I get that. about that ingenuity, right? Mm -hmm. Like, because we talk about creativity, being able to use what you got, because mm -hmm. it's so many people with money that don't have ingenuity mm -hmm. because they they associate their money with solving every problem that they have. Yeah. So they don't even know how to think outside the box because, like, I got money. I can pay for that. Mm -hmm. My money can pay for that. Yeah. And then when it don't work, it's like, why don't it work? That's right. But when you struggling, that's right. Oh, you gonna make something happen. But when out of you nothing. bootstrap things, you understand the difference of it. It's a lot more value in it. Like mm. you know what I'm saying? If somebody just gave you a hundred thousand dollars and said start a podcast, it's not gonna bother you as much if your podcast don't work versus you having to come up with that hundred thousand dollars and make sure that you show up every single day and mm. do your recordings and make sure the content get out and it's a different type of feeling. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So for me, I think that that's what we have to remember is that, you know, and I tell people, you doggone right, I'm happy I'm not poor no more. Who the heck want to remain there? Mm -hmm. it, it was never no fun for me being poor. I don't care what nobody say. I never say, you remember the good old days when we were poor? I ain't never said that in my life. I don't think I've heard nobody say that. <laughs> nah, I don't think I never heard nobody say that, right? Um, I never heard nobody say I enjoyed the struggle. You, like, you know what I'm saying? I heard people say the struggle made me who I am, and that part I can understand and agree with. But I ain't never met nobody who said they enjoyed the nah, struggle. I heard people say it's beauty in the struggle. Like, it's beauty in it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not beautiful. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so, boom, ingenuity. We want to pay phone for the people that don't remember pay phones or whatever, right? She got the... The paper with mm -hmm. the list of apartments, four hundred dollars. Tell yeah, the the thrifty um the thrifty ad. I don't know what y'all call it in y'all area. It, okay, yeah, I don't remember that. I remember the yellow books though. The yellow yeah, pages. Well, no, this was like the newspaper with all classifieds in there. Okay, so, so I think we had yellow pages where it was like all. See, I'm sure my age now. You you remember yellow pages? You I remember, remember yellow, yellow pages, pages oh, but right. yellow pages. But no, this is aside from a telephone book because landlords don't advertise in telephone okay. books. Okay. They advertise in newspapers. Okay. So this is the classified section of the newspaper. Okay. So she got the newspaper. Yeah. Looking through, 
somebody is this the first not the first person but like the first time you get the crib somebody said you're on my last quarter okay i was on my last quarter it gotta work or it have to work right facts you know what i'm saying what's the worst that's gonna happen i'm gonna still be here under the bridge it ain't like i didn't try Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's a difference if i if i never picked up the phone and tried Mm. you know what i'm saying but i believe god had angels along me every step of the way because that landlord was an angel Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying um even when i got sexually abused and you know um I went to a place called Terra Lynn. It's in my book or whatever. But to me, that's a guardian angel to take me away from that pain, you know. Um, and there are so many guardian angels that I meet along the way that people don't even know about. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like David, my brother, to me, he's like a guardian angel to me because I never would be sitting here talking to you on the podcast. I still be doing real estate, doing very, very well. But because he's a guardian angel to me, He's has placed me before the people to say, hey, y'all need to hear what she have to say. <laughs> you, isn't it so important to just be a good person, though? Yes. Because I feel like that, like, yeah, like you calling mm-hmm. them blessing. All that comes from your heart, though. That's right. Like People yeah. can sleep on that all they want. I don't yeah. give a damn. I'm That's sorry. Right. That's right. Yo, you don't get things like that when you yo, you just yeah. was a, a good person. Pe- yeah. People be surprised the blessings you get just by being a good person. That's right. That's So they got a saying, too, you know, um, yes, to be a good person, but also to be a mover. So, like, if you see somebody standing outside their car holding their thumb, you're just probably going to pass them by, right, Jay? Mm -hmm. But if you see somebody trying to push their car, you're probably going to get out and want to help them push. No, fucks. It's oh. just a different type of process. This is hard. Yeah. Like it's, hey, I hope y'all listening, man. All right, so cool. They give you the opportunity to get the crib for free. Yeah. How do you then go from there? Now you're on your knees, right? You was on your, mm-hmm. you was crawling at first, right? You get the mm-hmm. crib opportunity. Now you're mm-hmm. on your knees. I mean, you was on your ass. Mm-hmm. Then you start crawling. You get mm-hmm. the crib, right? Mm-hmm. How you go from being on a, from crawling to standing up on your knees before you even start walking, right? Like, before mm-hmm. you even get into the real estate, how did it go from the crib to your first couple dollars? Because you was on your last quarter. Yeah. So, um, after um, I ended up getting an apartment, shortly afterwards, Hurricane Katrina happened. Damn. So, I still was, like, I was on government assistance, welfare, food stamps, you know, um, child care, Medicaid. I had it all. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Um, in fact, at that point, I felt like I was really living a good life because by this point, they have helped me with rental assistance. Mm. Um, but when Hurricane Katrina came, that was the moment where I was like, yo, like, our mayor, not e- like, they done flew out. Like, you know what I'm saying? We in this city by ourselves. They talking about the um, floodgates done broke and everybody about to drown. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, I want to get out of here. I'm not ready to die, you know. Um, and... And, and, you know, making it through Hurricane Katrina and ending up in a city called Lafayette, Louisiana was where I really got my first start. And that's why I went to real estate school. I had no money. You know, I sold my food stamps to pay for the real estate exam. Like, I just didn't have no money. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, And I just kept on working. I just kept being persistent. I kept on showing up. I kept on doing. And then it eventually happened. That's why I said you don't need the money. You just need to be around the right people one connections is very important but you also just got to have that drive to keep on pushing when even when you don't have it i I just want people to hear you like i'm here because yeah. i get yeah. it i thank god every day for willpower yeah mm-hmm. for this to just to have the willpower to continue when mm-hmm. i don't want to yes oh my god that's so yes. important man that's all so right important. cool so you go to a uh, real estate school mm-hmm. you pass the exam after seven times Okay, it's, so it's more Yeah, struggle. so y'all know that $700 in my yams, okay? The people that really understand what yams is, that's the food stamp. Mm-hmm. So that's $700. That's a lot of money for us. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you understand that? Yeah, you had to at least been, if it's if it's still how it is, like you would at least had to sold at least 1400 Thank you. Food stamp. Okay. Come on, man. You like, know what I'm saying? Come okay, on, you understand, the, you come understand the math. Okay, so at the end of the day, you know, that was a very expensive test. But I um, ended up passing it. My first year in real estate, I made $5,000. I mm. thought I was about to be rich. How do you make $5,000? Dude, first of all, that's horrible in real estate. <laughs> uh, I mean, to, to I you remember, now, you yeah, understand? But to no, somebody that just came on. It, during that time, it was horrible for me. Okay. With nothing, okay? okay? I was like, yo, I could work at McDonald's and make more money than this. This less than minimum wage. Okay. Um, But I sold um, a property, you know, and, I mean, I made, you know, commission. So 
the very next year, though, I was like, I got to change. Everybody's focused on buyers and sellers and all it is. I got to find my niche. So I started working with investors only. Mm. And so one rich person knows another rich person that knows another rich person. You know, it's the same with poor people. Poor people know poor people that know poor people. You know what I'm saying? Rich people know rich people. So I found if I can find one rich guy, he's going to know somebody else. And I just got to do right, you know, and that's what I did. I got to keep emphasizing. Y'all got to listen to what she's saying. Because, like, you're right. It's mm-hmm. it's all about the community, though. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, he's even with that, yeah. I use that in my interview. Uh, I apply that in my interview space, right? Mm-hmm. If I interview one person that's lit, they know somebody else that's lit. They know mm-hmm. somebody else that's lit. I mm-hmm. bet. Now it's like, as long as the interview good, they like it, I make them sound good, they look good. Yo, can you pass me to this person? Yeah. They want to look and sound good, too. Yeah, that's right. Same exact process. Okay. So, I'm a cheater now. I think I, I think David asked you the same question. Now, I'm going to ask you. <laughs> When you hear investor, what do you hear from that? Like, what does that mean? Buying income. Buying income. Yeah, my answer ain't going to never change to that. You Any that. investor I know is buying income. You know, when you invested into this, what did you invest for? <sighs> to make money. Yeah. Let's just be honest. You're going to make money. You're going to get your podcast out. You're going to get it in front of people. But you ain't doing it for free. That's not a nonprofit. For sure. I mean, I, it Maybe. ain't start like that. So, right. I start with my purpose, honestly. Right, but you your purpose didn't yield a return. It did, and then once I started understand, it, I, I'm a little different. I was retarded. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm just being straight up with you. Yeah. I like doing it. I enjoyed it. I, I love people hearing mm-hmm. the story. I thought just being honest, transparent with me. I grew up understanding that. Um, I, I thought I wanted to be famous because they didn't teach us back in my day. Like when I was a kid, they didn't teach us about the people making the money. Mm-hmm. They told us the person that's hosting the show. Yeah. And then I learned that this person is just a fucking flunky. Like he's mm-hmm. the puppet, right? Mm-hmm. So I wanted to show people that if I get lit, I wanted to infiltrate the space. Mm-hmm. I wanted to get lit and be the one to telling them like, yo, this ain't what you want. Mm-hmm. So whatever. Yeah. But that's just a little different. Yeah. But yeah. Anybody I know um, who calls themselves an investor is buying income. Mm. You know, um, and I would encourage you as an investor, whatever it is you're looking for a return on on that investment so where do we go wrong and i'm gonna say because a lot of creators watching this we we hear investor be like i just need an investor like how can i get an investor like mm-hmm. how do one how would one go to look for an investor right not mm-hmm. being an investor but seeking out for one investors like proposals they like to see how they're going to make money on the money they put out they want to put their children out there, which is their money, mm-hmm. and they want them to come back with a whole lot of friends. If you can show how you can bring a whole lot of friends to the house and have a house party, it's going to be investable. How do I show that if I'm not even making the bread from what I'm doing right now? You have to be honest and show what you have and show what the projections are. Mm. Okay. I mean, you're not inventing the, reinventing the wheel. If you remain consistent, you get sponsors, you do whatever, you put together that package. I'm sure it can be pretty profitable mm. for an investor to look at. Okay. Okay. Just curious. All right, bet. Mm-hmm. I told him you're asking a lot of mm-hmm. questions for me, no, too. No, that's good. <laughs> so, all right, no, so we do the real estate thing. Now you start making, now you found your niche, mm-hmm. you start making money, mm-hmm. right? What was the thing that was um, the most beneficial to you in, in the first thing you started to do that was making a lot of money, then a lot of money? I don't understand the question. Ask me what was the first like, thing you started to do mm-hmm. that started to make you a lot of money and you kept doing it? What, what, like you said, your niece was finding people. Investors. Investors. Yeah. So um, that's You the found the first investor. Yeah. What so was flips. It? Yeah. Flips really like receiving large sums of money, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 from a deal at a time. You know, that was good. Um, and then, you know, wholesaling came where I made $100,000 in a deal. And then, you know, um, we start making millions in deals, you know, um, just, you know, by buying an apartment complex that can be class D, bringing it up to class B or C, and then turning it around and selling it. You get what I'm saying? So it's, you know, it's just the cycle of real estate. But you got to find that person that's going to buy it, right, I guess? Yeah, I mean, but there's a lot of buyers. There's a lot of buyers that buys income. Okay, cool. So let's say you got somebody that came ten thousand dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Man, I don't want to go to real estate school. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to put my money in something and get a quick flip. It only had to be a lot, but mm-hmm. just something that make me more than what I had, what I brought to the table. Mm-hmm. What would you suggest? Um, ten thousand dollars down in real estate probably get you fifty thousand dollars in real estate money, because the bank could give you eighty percent. So, um. 
probably find your rental property, invest into a rental property and use the 10000 as a down payment. So you would have to have good credit though, right? I'm assuming because you got to go to the bank. Yeah. So, I mean, d depend on what you consider good credit, right? Um, there's hard money lenders, there's private lenders, there's banks, you know, there's more than just, you know, the old traditional banks, right? But if you had... You know, what's um twenty percent of fifty thousand dollars? Oh man, don't do that. It's ten thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, it's like ten thousand. So if you had if you had that ten thousand, let's just say your credit score is six twenty, you can go to um a private lender and they can loan you the money on it. Mm. Okay, so what would be your suggestion? If to somebody do, just to rent buy a rental property mm. and allow that money to make you money every allow that property to make you money every single month. Mm. I mean, ten thousand dollars is not a whole lot in real estate, but it is a door. You know what I'm saying? It may not be like a thousand dollars in passive income. It may be like four hundred dollars in passive income. But imagine that four hundred dollars over ten years. Mm. You you know what I'm saying? Like it just continue. And then imagine having three of those four hundred dollars. Now we talking. You see what I'm saying? And then imagine you keep on adding every single year. So one would say that. Um, rental properties is a hassle. It's a lot. You got to deal with people. Well, because they became an employee. Um, I mean, I have quite a substantial portfolio, but I have a um, very large property uh, management division. So I don't think it's a hassle. It's a hassle probably for the people that work for me, but mm. that's what they pay for. Damn. Okay. This is a game. Mm. We're getting somewhere. We get So people say, like, if you can get 10, you can get 20, right? What would be the ideal number that you should you, you should work to get? I can't say what somebody else's financial situation is, but I know for me, I'm going to a thousand. So I want to hit a thousand, um, and I want to do a thousand without these large, large groups. Like there's a lot of large groups that you know go and get four thousand, five thousand doors, um, but it's just such a tiny, tiny, tiny piece of the um, pie. I want to have majority of the pie with the thousand dollars. I mean, with the thousand doors that I'm looking at. But I think it it's based upon that person, you know. Um, how much income they're looking to replace it. They only make $3,000 a month. Well, that's probably like 10 properties, if that, you know, so you get 10 doors, you replace that $3,000. Now the money you go to your job for, you can take that and go and invest it into some other properties. Mm. Damn. I'm trying. I'm trying to catch up. All right. Okay. Passive money is different. It's much sweeter. Like, you know, what we're doing now is very active. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it, it's based off of our performance. It's based upon our ability to open up our mouth and words are going to come out and people are going to engage, right? My, the bulk of my money come from people needing a roof over their head. Mm. I don't even got to speak. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, David said it best, right? He wants to, you know, have a portfolio where it's not based upon popularity, like, if he get canceled, like people get canceled in this era, mm -hmm. he still want to have income to fall back on. Right. Nehemiah the same. You know, it's just what it is. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out how, what is, what's the smartest way to put something in and get the most return from it? And you would mm -hmm. pretty much say real estate and, and the rental property. I would say any form of real estate investing in, you know, buy and hold. Yes, absolutely. But if you want to do a flip and you have a partner that's going to do all the heavy work, then do that. You know, there's not a lot of properties you can flip at $50,000 mm -hmm. and, and make $150,000. You know what I'm saying? But there are a lot of rental properties you can start off buying small and then building up your portfolio small. I did it with one property. Like a lot of people be like, yo, I got 10 doors at one time. I started with one little huckleberry. I still got that huckleberry. It still run me 550 every single month. It has been for years. I love it. The tenants are great, you know. So let's go. Let's, so let's rewind then. So you said it's not hard for you because you got people in place to do the work, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I'm assuming you didn't have them at first though, right? Or No. So what happens is this. Everybody who I have now, you can hire. Mm. Those are real careers for people. Right. The maintenance man is a real career. The property manager is a real career. Realtors finding your projects for you is a real career. Project management, not property manager, but project management to manage the construction of the property. That's the actual job. So you can bring all of those people, create your team and have them do all the work. And you just put in the money and you show up and you take pictures and say, yo, this is what I'm doing today. But how much money is that? 
Just well, it just depends. Like, I don't want to just rump off some numbers. But I mean, well, let's say you, you said that somebody ten thousand dollars, right? You started ten thousand dollars, got a fifty thousand dollars loan, mm -hmm. right? So the fifty thousand dollars went straight to the to crib. You still need the money to pay these people, right? Or should you work? First? No. So what happens is you're gonna find a property. Total, your loan amount would be fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Let's say the property you find is twenty five thousand. It leaves you with twenty five thousand dollars to play with. Mm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So with that twenty five thousand, you got renovations, and the renovations include the subs and all of their fees and all of that type of stuff. So collectively, in that whole fifty thousand, you're gonna try to make that number work. Okay. As a whole, so when you walk away, it's a fifty thousand dollar nutshell. That's what the people that's in that's, place and everything. That's everything. <sighs> this is hard. I hope people like writing down notes. Yeah. <laughs> like this is hard. Okay, I like this. I like this. All right. So, what is it that now that you're here? Right. I think I spoke to you earlier. You like you don't do flips no more. I try. So I'll help a friend or two out at some time. Okay. So what is it that you do now that's your special? Is it still the big investors and things like that? Are you are like how does how does somebody get into your mentorship program or like mm -hmm. get connected with you to get yes. this knowledge because yes. you don't deal with yes. the small people no more how, i how? do deal with the small people i deal with everybody you know i'm a small person look at me you know stop yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stop i do so um no nah, so um the property challenge.com okay. right um all, on all my social media platforms that's really the number one way that I coach and I mentor is through the property challenge. Um, but I would say that, you know, what I do now is I develop communities. Like my, I put my son name on a street sign. So like I'm very active with building neighborhoods and communities and things like that. So, you know, um, my, my, my level of expertise is going to be a lot different than a beginner's level of expertise, but I can take you from that beginner's level and get you to the developer level of eventually where I think everybody should be at. Mm. Sheesh, this is crazy. Damn. Okay. Is there anything that I, it wasn't any missed opportunities. Is there anything that I did not ask that I should have asked? You asked some great questions. Thank you. You did an amazing job. Nah, like, I'm impressed. Like, um, no, I think we answered and covered everything. Like, it was, it's been fun. Like, no, I was, was nervous fun. at first. This was good. And I appreciate it, but I'm, how can I provide more value to somebody that just don't have a lot, though? Like, mm -hmm. I, these are, like, your story is super dope, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. starting people off, but how can we provide some value to somebody that don't have, that's just watching, mm -hmm. and they really don't have it, and, 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 and they haven't arrived at, you know, money not meaning everything, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Everything we talked about. Well, like, then they have to start at the mindset, mm -hmm. right? And I would say, you know, um, you know, start reading, mm -hmm. you know. Um, what, what What should they read? So um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a great book. The Millionaire Next Door is mm. another great book. Um, That's crazy. Um, Top, Top Foons is another great book. Um, I mean, there's so many great books out there. You know, um, The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone is a great book. I heard of that. Um, man, there's so many great books. Oh, man, I'm looking for this. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for something. I want to show you. Uh, Never Eat Alone. It's a great book. What about um a book called Profit First? Yeah, I never heard of never it. Never heard of it? Mm -mm. Okay. I just we tell them books. I literally just screenshotted a book like today. Really? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so you said reading. Yes, reading is a big part. Like I was self educated. So nobody taught me anything. Like I had to go and self educate myself. Like real estate school taught me law, but like you know, what I understand about money, how it works, and, you know, how to generate it, I had to go and read and learn. And Rich Dad Poor Dad was really a big book for me. Okay, so I'm just trying to put myself mm -hmm. in, in someone else's place. I know it's easy to say excuses, right? Mm -hmm. But let's just think like your average person. Man, read, man, I don't got time to read. Like, bro, come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to work. I, I don't got time to read. That's a broken mindset. Mm. That's a broken mindset. So it's no easy way to it, basically. No, there's no there's no shortcuts. Mm. Like everybody got to stop trying to press the button on the elevator, and sometimes you got to take the stairs. Yeah. And you know, for me, you know, I took the stairs. You know, um, I didn't know what I didn't know, but I learned and I asked a lot of questions. And then me reading started putting me in rooms with other like minded people. Mm. Then they started talking. Then I started listening some more. Then they start doing something. Then I was like, yo, I can do that too. 
you know. Um, so when somebody tell me they can't read or they don't have the time to read, well, it's because you're not making the time to read. That's a fact. A little bit more ingenuity, right? I'm going to help you out too. Um, don't allow people to – you You want to have your own process, right? Mm-hmm. And you got to embrace that. Mm-hmm. And I say that to say, like, sometimes you might have to pick up an audio book. But I know when I first picked I up – I love audio books. Yeah, I just know when I first picked up my audio book, people, it's, you have certain people chattering saying, that ain't reading, you ain't doing this. But, like, you got to get the knowledge however you can get the knowledge. I love audio books. I don't see nothing wrong with audio Right, so I'm just letting – to the person that might be lazy or don't want to read – if That's you listen to this, though. yeah, my say if you listen to this, yeah. you can you can listen to an audio book. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that's one way. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. If you have time to listen to a podcast, you have time to read like listen to a book. Nah, facts. Absolutely. Okay. Um Do you have any survivors remorse at all? Or well, nah, you off, you off that? When you say survivor's remorse, break it down for me. Like, you know, you made it out of the struggle, right? It's probably a lot of friends, a lot of associates, a lot of people you know who don't have the mindset as you and that's never probably going to have the mindset as you. Do you ever think, like, kind of like an empath, like, damn, like, I wish I could help everybody? Or do you just understand that certain people going to get it and certain people not going to get it? And I can just I can Google the exact definition. Everybody is a very broad term. mm um, I would like to help as many people as I can. Um, I don't think I've ever wanted to be like, you know, I'm going to touch every single billion people in the world. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I would say for me, I don't have survivor's remorse, you know, um, I would never apologize uh, it isn't actually survivor's guilt. My bad. Okay, survivor's guilt is a re- a response to an event in which someone else experienced loss, but you did not. I experienced a lot of loss. Mm. While the name implies this to be a response to the loss of life, it could also be the loss of property, health, identity, or yeah, no. So, um, I went through this mentally, like I said, whenever I was trying to find my identity, mm. right? Not, not. I wouldn't even say survivor's guilt for anybody else. It was me not just knowing who I was and I couldn't find myself. Mm. Like I couldn't identify who I was, you know? Um, but I've never, um, I never ever stopped at the people who threw rocks at me along the way. So, um, and those, you know, I think Jay-Z said it best, right? Money. Yeah. Money can change people with bad motives or whatever, but honestly, Money um, changes the people around you, how they treat you, Mm, mm, mm. you know. And so I found that people treat me way different than how I would even treat them. Mm. I'm still the same me. I just don't do the same things that they do. So I don't have any remorse of, you know, leaving anyone behind. And, you know, I still see people who we all started at the same line and they still at the line and I didn't ran 10 10 miles I don't feel no type of way damn man because I'm not gonna lie because even talking about helping people it's a part of me that's like mm-hmm. even if you don't like it's like even if you're the most lazy person in the world mm-hmm. I still want to be able to help you but it's like you can't Mm-mm. right you can't. but I, I'll be lying to say like because I'm like yo how do we help these people there's some mm-hmm. people out there who are really struggling I think people be lying though I think they be lying. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to help nobody lazy. Mm. I don't care what nobody said about me. I'm not trying to help nobody lazy because I'm fighting with laziness. That's a spirit. Mm. Like, I'm not about to fight with your lazy spirit. And then it's it's going to take one of, it's going to be you or me. Mm. It's either I'm going to conform or you going to conform. Right. And I don't want to get caught in that spirit. So I'm not about to sit here and just tackle in it. That's why I said you have to have some type of expectancy when you come to somebody asking for help. Like you got to be willing to do something to add value to say, yo, you know, like this is why you should, you know, rock with me and help me. Like, you know what I'm saying? There was not one rich person that came to Turk and said, here is ten thousand dollars. Go get your life together. Mm. Nobody did that for me, and I I under I would appre- I appreciate that nobody did. Mm. I appreciate that nobody did. So I don't have no type of remorse, you know. Um, you know. In fact, I tell all my students get ready for the grieving process. You about to lose a lot of people. Mm. 
When you get to this level of success, you're going to lose a lot of people. They ain't going to invite you to parties no more. The family cookouts, you're not invited. They got gatherings by grandma's house. You ain't invited. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, get ready to grieve. But how do you get? How do you prepare for that, though? And, 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 mm-hmm. and honestly, you have went through that. So you can tell somebody to get ready to grieve because you've been mm-hmm. through that. But honestly, like, you're still human. Like, how did that make you feel? Like, how was you able to get out of I'm that? I'm street strong. Like, you know what I'm saying? When I look back and be like, yo, so do, you know, do I want to worry about them not rocking with me or or do I want to be poor? Like, do I want to not have no more money? Do I want to have to go to the bank and ask them to reverse my NSF fees? Like, I got to pick a side. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? If my success intimidates them, they can't be around me. My success intimidates people and it should. Mm. But it should also motivate you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always tell people, I'm going to intimidate a lot of y'all, and I'm going to inspire a lot. You just going to have to pick a side. This I don't got hard. no in-between. This is hard. I love it. All right, so curious. Um, It's not off topic, but I'm just curious. Somebody, a woman, mm-hmm. a black woman that's so successful like yourself, right? Mm-hmm. You married. Do you find it hard to be submissive, or do you even believe in that? Oh, absolutely. I believe in it. My husband, um, I yield to him. You know, I bow to him. Um, My husband, um, and I think the problem is a lot of men don't have security and are confident in themselves. And, you know, it makes it sometimes challenging for women to be submissive because submissive don't mean shut up, be quiet, go cook and clean. That's not what submissive is. Right. Submissive to me is yielding to my husband's opinion and to what my husband is saying and what my husband requires of me as a wife. Mm. So when I'm around my husband, like in the streets, I'm alpha. He knows that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm in the male's industry. Okay. I'm in a room where I got to kick the freaking door in and be like, I'm in here. I don't care what none of y'all saying. I got to go in there. I got to prepare three times more for a um, planning and development meeting than what the men have to do. Mm. Cause they 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 already have this this seat. You get what I'm saying? I have to go and take a seat. So when I get home, I don't want to be that woman at home. Like I don't have to go take a seat at my house. My husband pull out a chair for me and say, "Baby, I'm happy. You mm-hmm. home? You know what I'm saying? My husband loves me with all of my love languages, and I love him with all of his love languages. So it's so easy for me to submit to him because he make it easy to love him. Mm. Was that something that, that he was already doing or did he have to learn it? Like, did he have to learn how to love you through your love languages? Yes, he did. You know, um, my love language is acts of service. Mm. You know, um, his love language is quality time and physical touch. So um, I'm not really a physical touch person because a child of abuse is normally not, right? But I knew that that was important for my husband to feel love. So I submitted to that feeling because I need him to know how much I love him. That's how important he is to me. Damn. So I gave in to that. That's fire. Okay, so question, was you in the beginning or, or was you making more money than him from the jump? He No, he worked. He's He used to work two to three jobs so I can do exactly what I'm doing now. And now I retired him. He don't have to work ever again in his life. That's hard. That's hard. Okay, okay. Damn, because so, I'm 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 just curious because you know usually the money will make it hard to be soft. The money mm-hmm. will make it hard to submit. It's like, bro, I'm just poor together. Damn, just poor together. So I mean, so he don't y'all don't deal with no um because even still some type of uh insecurities could come when like I guess you said you retired him. It's no feelings of like she make more than me and like hurt my feelings. I'm not being a man. He a man. Mm. He a man. All man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody was there whenever he was working three jobs. You know what I'm saying? Nobody was there when he had to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and go to offshore jobs. Nobody was there when he had to go to Walmart and unload those boxes. Nobody was there when he would hop on the FedEx truck and go deliver. Nobody was there for that. You know what I'm saying? So I think the biggest thing for us is we have silenced everybody out of our marriage. And we, like, our marriage, 18 years, right? So um, we... I mean, like we just left Houston. We went on a um, a, um, date in Houston and we just enjoyed each other. And we don't like we don't have um, what you call it. Like. Like my husband don't feel like, oh, she the breadwinner. It's ours. Mm. It's ours. He's the beneficiary on all my stuff. I love that man with all my heart and soul. If I die, it is his. 
if he dies, it's all mine. Like, you get what I'm saying? So, but the beautiful thing about that is we was poor together. So there's a difference. Like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't go and get with somebody that didn't have none and I had everything. Like, it probably would be a little bit different. But because I seen this man go turn my water back on whenever the city turned it off. All right, so since we're here, I just want to have a little fun. Just, mm-hmm. like, hold up. Just, so I, I interviewed um, two young ladies, right? Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> since you're an entrepreneur, you get into the bag, you you busy, right? Mm-hmm. Let me find this video. So mm-hmm. I interviewed these two young ladies, and we were talking about this 9 to 5 thing. So this has been like a, this used to, this was, a, it's old now, but it was a, a big conversation about 9 to 5 versus, versus uh, entrepreneurs. And the conversation went something like, um, she can't date a guy with a job or nine to five because he's he won't be able to take her on trips whenever he wants. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious. Mm-hmm. You've been an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Can you just do whatever you want when you want it? Want to want to do it? Mm-hmm. You can. Yeah. Mm. But I'm not an entrepreneur either. Like, um, I don't really use that word. You don't. Nah. Um, but I would say, you know. Um, I, I mean, if that's what her requirements are, I respect that. That's her requirements, you know. Um, me and my husband about to go spend a few weeks in Venice. I don't need no permission. He don't need no permission. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know. Um, so you don't subscribe to an entrepreneur. But I feel like even an entrepreneur can't really do that. Unless you're a high level. Like, you're high level. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. Like, yeah. your average yeah. entrepreneur can't stop for two weeks. Or Mm -hmm. is that wrong? Is is that not true? So I think people make time for what's important for them. Mm. I make time for my husband because it's important for me. You know, I make time to be a mom because it's important. I make time for ministry because it's important. I make time, you know, um, for this Internet stuff. (laughs) <laughs> I, I swear i be calling the same thing yeah. to this day and i do yeah. interviews like, <laughs> yeah I swear. you know um but I, I i i mean i think that you know there was a season though jay where you know like i said my head was down hmm. that was a grind season like it wasn't no season to be going to spend money we didn't have hmm. everything that we got back in i kept putting in that's why i got nine figures it's not because every time we got it i went and was like yeah look at me look at me I could have been bought Bentleys. I could have been bought Ferraris. I could have been bought Lambos. But that wasn't what was for me or my husband, right? So now when we look at it, right, you know, we make a quarter million dollars passive a month. And that's not to stun on nobody. That's to let you know if somebody poor from New Orleans that was under a bridge with her child can come from nothing to where I'm at today, anybody can. You know what I'm saying? So... When I, when you make money passively, you can do that. That's why I say I'm not really like an entrepreneur because I feel like entrepreneurs are actively working for that money. Yes. Okay. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I do think, you know, like I said, there was a season where, you know, we were plowing, you know, like people be trying to get their harvest before it even, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not time. You got to plow. And so I think, you He's know, depending on corn out the field yeah. before it even grow. That's right. <laughs> and I think crazy. that, you, you know, get sick. You got to right. wait till it's ripe. That's right. You're still going to be hungry. Mm. That's what's going to happen. You're mm. still going to be hungry, right? Do you, so curious. And this is some real shit. Fuck, we've been mm-hmm. vulnerable. This is a vulnerable yeah. conversation. <laughs> you know, when you come from nothing mm-hmm. and you get a little bit of something, I feel like it's almost human nature to want to wanna treat yourself because I'm not used to it. Mm hmm. I want to get this designer. I want to. I mm-hmm. want to look good because, like, mm-hmm. I ain't never had it before. Mm-hmm. But you know, learning now that that be the same thing that hold us back. Mm-hmm. How do we get out of that mentality? One and two. Do you think that we at least have to go through it once? Because I have a couple opinions about that. But I'm curious. Um, I think a great book to read is <laughs> "A Millionaire Next Door" for you. Mm. <laughs> like, please read that ASAP. I'm gonna check it out. Okay. Um, but I would say this. You know. Um, I create wealth, Mm. right? I can also wear wealth. So for me, I have assets um, that outperform all of my liabilities. So I just have assets over assets over assets. I think when you get to that point, you can do whatever you want. Like, Mm. you know what I'm saying? Um, I think so many people want instant gratification that, you know, they trade it in um, for the delayed and, to me, delayed gratification is way better because now I have on Gucci shoes, I can buy a thousand of these and not even blink. Some people can buy one time. 
Mm-hmm. And then, you know what I'm saying? Entrepreneur. I got to go back and get it. I got to go back and get it. I got to keep up with everybody. I gotta but did you have to learn that, though? Did you have to? Was it a I point? I did. Yes. That's what I I'm curious. Cause I, I, yes. But I never been flashy in a sense of happening. Like, I've always been hoodie, tee, and, like, I've always been that. So, like, if I dress up, I'll dress up in Gucci, Chanel, Fendi, Pride. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got, you know, I got taste. But most of the time. No, oh, fucks. I'm this. No, I, I've learned that, Um, like, this is my experience. I had to understand it was so important for me to get it and lose it mm-hmm. because I now I know how I know how important it is to get it and keep it, mm-hmm. right, that delayed gratification, like mm-hmm. you said. But I think if I never went through that phase of, you know, mm-hmm. blowing it, I never had. I never understood what that was. Mm-hmm. Like I never even had. It. I never even wore it. I never mm-hmm. had it. You know, I never mm-hmm. had it to get. So then when I got it and I spent it, it was like, what the? F- where, mm-hmm. where did everything go? Yeah. So I don't curse. So it's kind of like. But when I hear that, you know, it's like you remember that song. Um, uh, it's probably New Orleans song, but it'd be like acting like they ain't never had. Because mm. you don't curse is probably hard for me to understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Acting like an N word that ain't never had. Uh, shit. Yeah. Acting like a nigga yes. I know. I probably. Yeah. I don't know. I can't. But that's what happens whenever you get a whole lot of money. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. Right. Well, for me, I never, I never had that type of mindset or mentality. You know. Um, so I, I would say it's hard for me to judge that. But I would know. I know for me. Um, because of how I am, it's, it, it wasn't hard. Okay. That makes sense. Yo, it's crazy. Cause like, you know, how, you, that made me remind me, we about to get out of here. It made me remind me when you said, when people say, uh, act like you've been here before. Mm-hmm. That's super important. That's so good. I never heard that, but that's never so heard good. that. No, I never heard that, but that's you, really it's good. Su- because it's like, it's like, bro, act like when something happened, don't be too excited that, that you, sh- it's kind of like you showing your hand. Mm-hmm. Now people know that this is new for you. Mm-hmm. Bro, play it cool, bro. Like, mm-hmm. act, like you've been, act like this is the normal mm-hmm. for you, even if it's not. Right. I think it's so it's so much into that. But, y'all, this was a great conversation. Yes. I ain't going to hold you too long. Um, Bro, this is fire. You're welcome yes. anytime you want to pull oh, up. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. Nah, thank no you for having me. Nah, anytime. Let people know how to follow you, how to support you, what you got going on, if they can support yeah. you, all that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm Terrica Lynn Smith on all platforms, so you can go follow me on all platforms. Um, and then, um, I mean, if this lunch and time for the challenge, you can go to the propertychallenge.com and sign up. Yo, can we give some people, can we give one person something? Yeah, Come on, absolutely. like, come on, like, All right, all right, so. Bless you, the platform. All right, so I'm going to bless. All right, so I don't know how you want to give it away, but what I'm going to do is I'll give you one of my board games, my real estate board games that I created. Okay. And you give it out to one of your audience and whoever however you want to do it okay. however you want to do it I'm going to give it to a black woman that's what I want to do all right well black let's woman go with a child is that too much that's too much no nah, that's it's, good. Some, it's a developer's story. board game so it teaches you how to how I got started in real estate mm. and it's a good board game okay so this game can help somebody get money yeah it teaches you development Terrica Lynn Smith Mr. J Hill J Hill Podcast. Hey man, it don't get no realer than this. Yay. That was great. I appreciate it. Um Thank give me you. the board game. I'm gonna make sure um we'll figure it out. I don't know. Repost this, tag us both, um, and I'm gonna choose a random person that posts it. So you had to watch it to the end to understand it. So Yeah, that's hey, it. The lucky that's person it. gonna win. I appreciate you. Yes, thank you, Jay. Ah.